Hi, this is Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. There are many life changes that can happen after divorce that make it difficult or impossible to uphold requirements of your divorce decree. The orders issued in a divorce are based on the facts presented at that time, but the circumstances used in issuing those orders can obviously change. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, Talk to us at Cordell and Cordell. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. Oh, going to You are one pathetic loser. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Is it too harsh? No. That's okay. Good. I like it. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. My name is Brad Nolan on Twitter, at Brad Nolan. Brian Moot is here. I'm Moot Points on Twitter. Moot Comedy everywhere else, but Moot Points on Twitter. I know, branding-wise, <laughs> it's probably not a good decision. And I also hate having those conversations. They're so first world where you're like, hey, my branding, my personal brand is all, I mean, I wish they'd all be, you know, the same. But I had to take Moot Points because Twitter can feel like such a useless like just firing off moot opinions into nothingness. Right. I am at Brad Nolan everywhere. Oh, look at you, consistent on your branding. Well, every time a new social network opens, I'm like, oh, Brad Nolan, even though I'll never use it. I'll just, just oh, snap it up. Ah, Brad Nolan. There's, a, there's one in Chicago that tries to get at me, and I, I'm not going to let that Brad oh, Nolan Oh, we yeah. also have Patrick Moot hanging with us today. What up? Uh, speaking of the name branding thing, this is just a quick little tangent, but uh, have you ever, like, w- in, the, in the power rankings of your name, Brad Nolan, Patrick Mood Prime, where do you rank? Number one. On the number power. One. I'm how, absolutely number one. How far do you have to go back before you find another Brian Moot? Or whoever your name is. For me, so I, I try the I Google not very, not often, like once or twice a day, just to see if there's anyone else creeping up on me. But Wait, you, how often do you do that? You said, well, just once or twice a day, and then um, <laughs> once or twice. I have a Google day. alerts to make sure that I'm the only one posting. Just checking the star meter for people with more <laughs> in the and, industry. Well, and mine's not really a star meter; it's sheer search engine optimization, tech nerd stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. I've been working on this since I'm like 14. I've been like trying to build, and so and it's actually not impressive when you think about it that I've been working on it for that many years. Um, but yeah, the closest Brad Nolan is a guy who writes for the Tribune in like Iowa or something. He like sounds that. pretty cool. Yeah, he's fine. He's See, right good. around the time where I I, uh, I start finding other traces of other Brian Moots because there are other Brian Moots. Oh, and they're weird. Um, ass. And they all reach out to me. One of them reached out to me. He was like, "My name's Brian Moot, just like your brother." It's like we're brothers. I think that's the <laughs> no, can- it's not. That's it's the not Canadian like we're one. brothers at all. He that, so Canadian. That Canadian <laughs> one. He actually asked me to take down some of my more edgy material off YouTube while he was looking for a job because he thought that was costing him a job. Oh, that's funny. And I was like, not only am I not getting a job right now because of my material, it's also costing you. <laughs> like, I'm taking us all down, man. All its Brian Moots are going down. Here we have Brian Moot. Nothing screams athletic midlife crisis like becoming a shoe collector all of a sudden. And Brad Nolan. I have a ton of shoes. I don't, I, I just keep acquiring them. They're very pretty. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. I don't normally describe shoes as pretty, but I guess I did there. <laughs> weird, yeah. That was a weird Patent moment. Patent leather. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we were going to talk about something before we didn't, so now we'll talk about it. But yeah. What did we have? I uh, I found a story, and I, I find it fascinating. And I know Patrick has done something similar in terms of stock photography. I don't know, Brad, you're familiar with yeah. how stock photography and things work. Um, so there is a girl named Katie Gaines, and now... She has been, in the last six years, been seen on everything from bottled water to vaginal creams um, for stock photography. Oh. Uh, and this is what happened. This is, it, And it fascinates me because I don't think a lot of people understand that when you sign the rights over to a photo, they can be sold to, be, to do anything. To be on anything, right? So this this girl, Katie Gaines, uh, and her boyfriend at the time were living in Cape Town, South Africa, and she hadn't seen her mom in a long time, and she didn't have any like recent good quality photos, so she was thinking about going in and getting um, you know, just some f- photography done, to photos to send to her mom. Like, hey, mom, look at look at these nice pictures or whatever. So she finds this, uh, this company in uh, Cape Town, and they're like, hey, we do stock photography. Would you be willing to, like, we'll give you these pictures for free if you let us take your photos, right? Okay. So she takes a bunch of pictures back in 2012. And about two years later, she moves on with her life. About two years later, she gets a call or an email from a friend in Japan who's like, yo, your face is on everything. 
Like your face is all over these commercials. It's on billboards. It's on like in in uh, downtown Tokyo on these giant digital billboards, and you're selling like vaginal cream. <clears throat> Like it's use the cream and end up pretty and happy like this girl. <laughs> and uh, now she's but like literally tens of thousands. She's the most re- it's the most recognizable stock photo uh, face model in the world. And she never got paid for any of it. Oh, man. Mm, that's, that's the bummer. sad part. Right? That is the sad part. I mean, now what? But I guess on one hand, you're like, well, I guess I have the face that can sell anything. But on the other hand, like you, you are got a real face got for no money. Cream. Do we know what her job is in real life? Do we know what she does? Um, look, I'm scanning the article, and it, they do not say currently. Because it'd be funny if she just quit whatever it was and go, I'm actually going to be a model now. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. I mean, I think that at this point she's just like, she's played out. She's (laughs) oversaturated. She never even got a shot at it. Her entire career started and ended before she noticed. Yeah. So Pat, (laughs) when you did your movie, uh, Patrick did a movie called Unhung Hero. Mm -hmm. A documentary. Mockumentary. Let's not breeze over that. Mockumentary. Mockumentary. Yeah, let's let's fire it. Unhung Hero. Okay, it wasn't my choice of titles. No, I just want them to be able to search it. I thought it was a great. I thought it was a great title. It's a fantastic title. Play off the unsung hero. Thing. Everybody who's not me thinks it's a great title. <laughs> I was going to call it fruitfully average hero who's a great listener, but it didn't. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't sell. Not as, as not as catchy. Quite well. uh, where he basically traveled the world uh, looking into penis enlargement, which mm-hmm. is totally something normal it's that normal. a guy would do. Guys do it. Well, it's interesting, to be honest. It's interesting to men and women. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, be girls to usually see. had more to say about it than guys did. Guys were like, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's just my penis is cool. That's all. Was he standing next to a big truck? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. I was like, oh, is it? Yeah. It's huge. With truck <laughs> nice. nuts on the trailer hitch. Yeah, cool leather Let's go jacket. Fix some stuff. Cool leather jacket guy who's 5'2. Patrick has done some other uh, acting uh, commercial work. And for, you, for a time, you did this. Uh, Axe, Axe body spray, thing, yeah. Right. I did like a campaign for Axe body spray, but not in, but in the UK, right? It was in the, it was, it, we shot it in Argentina, but it was for all of their foreign markets, so they call it Lynx. So it was actually Lynx body spray, but they did the whole concept was my eyes moved independently of one another when I'd get nervous to check and see if I was sweating from my armpits. Which lucky for them, they didn't even have to use like wardrobe or props or anything because I already sweat from my armpits like a ton. He's a gross sweater. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like really he sweats sweaty. he sweats out I'm of his armpits right like Japanimation cries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hoses like sha sha. But Stop you, making me nervous, world. In the in that the shoot, they took a bunch of stock they photography. Did. Right. Yeah, they and did. And they ended up those ended up on billboards all over the world. All over the world. Did you get paid anything for that or was that yes. part of the deal? No, was no, that I got in? so my agent is they're they're a modeling agency first. So they write some pretty rowdy contracts. I mean, I think for that it was like two years and then they paid me like twenty grand. See, it's fascinating to me because I have no idea Money. I have no idea any commercially thing I've ever done. I have no idea if any of that stuff is being used for stock photography, but I'll just judge by the lack of anyone ever texting me that they've seen it. It's, right. I mean, I Probably don't know not, how that works. I mean, overseas, internationally, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different, but in general, if you sign over the rights, you don't sign over them in perpetuity. Like, there is, the, you know, the contract runs out even if it's free. What the hell's perpetuity? That means forever, dude. That's yeah, a that big word. Forever. Oh, perpetuity? Yeah, I've never right. heard someone use that word. What's the root of that word? Forever. Perpetual. Perpetual. Oh, uh, yeah. Continuously. Thank God Brad's here. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a big word. That's also, I just feel like $20,000 is kind of light for two years. I mean, yeah. They, even if they don't use it, they have to pay you that. And then after two years, they well, have to re Katie Gaines got nothing. She's she got, selling vaginal creams. She got no I, I haven't seen this picture. What, is, what does yeah, she look she like? Hot? Can you show me that? She's got about a thousand of these things. Oh, yeah. Oh, You've seen her face. Ooh, yeah. We've all seen her she face. She has such a vaginal cream face. <laughs> or whatever. I mean, whatever she needed. Do we even know what we're doing? Or sports? Okay. Sports. Here we have Brad Nolan. I pick jerseys based on the tough sounding name of the mascot. And Brian Moot. Nachos are a food group, right? You're listening to the Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. The answer is no. Not a food group. Nachos? Yeah. We have plenty of. Just looked it up on Michelle Obama. Not a food Oh, because she's like the big hater on healthy eating. My name no, is, she hates unhealthy eating. She's the yeah. big pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, get these kids eating healthy in schools, which, which is... I, it's a mistake. I mean, let the kids have the pizza pockets, man. <laughs> pizza pockets. <laughs> I mean, that's when they can afford to eat them, when they don't gain all that weight. That's true. That's Brian Moot you're hearing. My name is Brad Nolan. Also in the studio with us is Patrick Moot. Yeah, that's right. You go by Pat, Patty, or Patrick? 
Uh, I think you've asked me this like five times. I don't care. I think it's whatever someone You just calls have to him. be consistent. But I prefer, oh, I, gotta write this down. I prefer muscles moot. Ask Pat every time. Ask Pat every time. So this, I thought, was hilarious. Uh, it, it's been an ongoing saga. The Trump show uh, yeah. never ceases to be a killer in the ratings. It's huge. It's got huge ratings. And porn star Stormy Daniels. They say ex-adult address in this story, but I think that's disputable. You have based questions? on, uh, <laughs> I think I think every time you finish an adult film, finish. you're you're kind of done until your next one, right? I mean, she can come out of retirement pretty easily for the right money, I'm sure. Uh, and I know she's in high demand. She said she's never been more popular in her entire porn star life than she is right now, being the. Uh, uh, being the one that Trump had an affair with, and then uh, Michael Cohen paid off. So Stormy Daniels said that in uh, 2006, she was threatened by a man to leave the Donald Trump situation alone. Mm-hmm. And she gave a police sketch artist rendering, and the sketch looks Exactly like Tom Brady. It is Tom Brady, <laughs> and his career yes. is through. I was wondering how this is about sports, but yeah, I get it. He's friends with Trump. Brady I and mean, Trump are friends. They're buddies. I mean, tell me that's not Tom Brady. Oh, that's so Tom that Brady. That is Tom Brady. He threatened her child, too. Or yeah. fat Colin Farrell. <laughs> or William Defoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better looking William Defoe. I just wanted to play porn music in the background. <laughs> oh, it works. It's got a little risque vibe to it. Uh, but yeah, everyone is trying to figure out who this uh, sketch is. Of. And I think police, sketch, uh, police sketches are absolutely useless. It's a scam. Well, I mean, they are useless. No one has ever looked at a sketch and been like, I've seen that, man. This is like 12, 10, 12 years ago that this happened. I'm sure you're going go to go tack that onto a telephone pole and everyone's going to I mean, everybody, say who it is. Everybody who looks at that picture and thinks they're looking in a mirror is just like, really? Come on. God, I didn't. Jeez, man. I mean, it's just so stupid. I just I, when they do police sketch sketches, they should just really make a mockery of it and just have like a cartoonist do it. Yeah, <laughs> just like, hey, look at this guy, and there's a sh- he's riding a surfboard his with a top hat on. His head's five <laughs> times bigger than the rest of his body. His eyebrows are halfway comedian. up his head. Brad Nolan is a stand-up dad. <laughs> the Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. We need to make these hit harder. Right? They need to like go out the gates. They need to go. <laughs> yeah, you should have pushed me off that joke, but I didn't know who was talking right there. I was like, who's this chick? It's all good. Like, was there another person in the studio? Who's I this can't. Girl? She's so tiny, I can't even see her. Here's who is in the studio right now. My name is Brad Nolan. I'm in the studio pushing the buttons. Not that well. Uh, Brian Moot, this is his show. We're all just kind of hanging out with him. Pushing the buttons is a harder job than you give it credit for. You gotta know when to do it. You gotta do it strong enough. You also Absolutely. Got yeah. Absolutely volume agree. knobs, too. If I'm just was, not allowed to be the one that says it. If it was easy, I could do it, and I can't do it. That voice is Pat, Patty Pat, Pat Moot. Yeah, what up? Call me Rick, yo. Alright, so we got an interesting, uh, you say call me Rick? <laughs> yeah, why not? That's half my name. How you call you Trick, the second too. half. I suppose. That's just missing pa. Trick moot. What a trick. I can see a new is it because character I'm, forming. Is it because I'm magic? P.A. trick. No, it's because you take sex for money. Pa trick. They money call me sex. pa trick. Uh, so there's an interesting thing going on in the NBA right now, which... Uh, I don't believe you. In all sorts of sports, I... Um, Here's the thing. Injuries and sports. And do you preserve your own career versus do you do the traditional sports fan thing where it's like, get out there, bro. We're paying you. Get on the court. Um, and here's what here's we got two players right now that are that are living different experiences. Um, Isaiah Thomas, he played for the Boston Celtics last year. He play he tried to play through an injury in the playoffs, a hip injury. And he was going to be a max deal player, going to make a hundred million dollars or more. And uh, he just he ran his hip into the ground to the point at which he had to get off-season surgery. He missed half the year. The Celtics traded him to the Cavaliers, who then traded him to the Lakers. And he's basically making minimum wage in the NBA, which is a good amount of money. But when you think about going from being a max deal player to that, uh, that is a significant drop-off of around $100 million. he's only making like $3 million a year, isn't he? Something like that? Yeah. But for someone who's earned the $100 oh, yeah. million dollar no, mark, be almost being MVP of the league. So... We've got Kawhi Leonard, on the other hand, who's getting crushed right now, plays for the Spurs. He doesn't want to play. They're in the playoffs. He says, I'm not injured. He says, I'm injured. I don't want to play. He's he's in a contract year. Because no one—here's my my point. Nobody respects you 
Like, we all want you to play, but guess who's not going to have your back? The team, when your hip is just destroyed. Because Isaiah Thomas played through his sister dying and a hip injury. Then the injury got way worse. And then the Celtics were like, see ya, trash, Peace. you're awful now, bye. Thanks for being almost MVP. We don't need you anymore. And now you got Kawhi Leonard getting killed by fans because they're saying, hey, he's not a team guy. He's not He's not ride or die for the San Antonio Spurs. It's like, yeah, but the management isn't ride or die for him. Well, yeah. he's young, too, and probably has two or three more contracts to his Maybe. name that are going to be like max deal contracts. Yeah, I think my opinion on this is this is America. You can do whatever he wants. If he, there's no way that that team cares about him. It's no, a bus, it's a bottom dollar all. business thing. So uh, unfortunately, I have to say that I'm with you, knowing nothing about sports, but just knowing self preservation. Right. There's been a million times I wasn't dedicated to something to the company because I knew that I needed the longevity to to actually keep a career. So I, I'm with that. Yeah, also, it, Greg Popovich is a jerk. <laughs> He's a grump. He just looks like an He's old so angry He's so grumpy. Man. He's well, always so grumpy. Here's the thing. I think people in all, like, fans, they, they really struggle at realizing that it's a job for these players, right? Yeah, they play it. They have an awesome job. They're also, you know, wildly talented in that sport. But once the team, the team is a business. And once that, once that entity is not making more money than they're paying it, Done. See ya. I mean, that's just bad math to to offer faulty contracts to players that are hurt. The NFL has been doing this forever, and that's why I hate when people get mad at uh, players for holding out when they don't have any guaranteed money left. Well, man, dude's twenty seven years old, and his body's starting to fail on him. He doesn't have that much time left to to make money and earn a living before he just ends up being some busted old dude with bad knees. Well, and even earlier than that, look at like the example of Robert Griffin the third. Look at what Mike Shanahan did to him in that playoff game at FedEx Field. Oh, that's some heavy sports. They ran him into the ground. Heavy sports right there. And that guy, rookie of the year, and then what? Nothing. Can't even get signed. He's a backup now. I think it's difficult for fans to understand when you wrap your entire every weekend, mm-hmm. you know, and you and you're, you're doing the fantasy sports and you're doing all the crazy stuff and like you're so invested in this thing. I think it's sometimes hard for fans to wrap their head around the fact that this is purely a business. This is nothing more right. than a money making machine. Yes, you have fed us some money, but at the end of the day, we will do whatever we want because this is a business. It's the same thing with music radio because that's where my background is. Why won't you? Why won't you play these new and up and coming artists? Because this is a business, right? All right. And by the way, we don't even play requests. Haven't in twenty years. Nobody we does. Don't let that secret out of the bag. <laughs> yeah. There's no request list. We ask people to text people it. Hey, just, text us. Let us know what you think. We just want your information so we can <laughs> bother you with if, email. If that's the case, if that's the case too. It'd be like, why do you guys keep requesting the same songs? Stop it. <laughs> yeah, this station only plays ten songs. Yeah. yeah, because those sell the best. You guys right. keep requesting them. Well, it's like people fall for the marketing. That's the thing. Like the Seahawks. The twelfth man. They don't need you, twelfth man. You think, oh, we're part of this? No, you're not. That's just a clever marketing ploy that made you think that you're part of the team, and now you think your teammates are holding out for money when you're not getting paid. Here we have Brad Nolan. I think my daughter is probably the coolest thing that I've ever done. And Brian Moot. Kids are monsters, and especially when they're honest with you. Just two boys living in a Barbie world. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. My name is Brad Nolan at Brad Nolan on Twitter. Brian Moot, it's his show. We're just in it. What's a Barbie world, speaking of what the things we're in? I've never understood that phrase. Uh, it's wrapped in plastic, bunch of hot babes. It's fantastic. Dude's got convertibles. Okay. Yep. No penises allowed. Whoa. Yeah. We're just, all anatomically just, not correct. Yeah. Actually, another phrase that I heard today, and tell me if you guys feel the same way, but this one makes me cringe. When someone <laughs> refers to kids as the fruit of your loins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is just because, a god awful. And to be completely statement. honest, that's the fruit of your loins it happens way before they actually develop into a baby. Like, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm like expelling I loin mean, fruit constantly. Right. <laughs> I, this morning. Right now. I think the value of the fruit of the male loins is so much less than the fruit of the female. Nah, it's right. like, it's, yeah, it's like calling it fruit. It's like just a bunch of grapes. Yeah, or so sow your like seed. It's disgusting. That voice is Patty Moot. What up? Um, also, I think also the fruit thing is like fruit of your labor. You know, like the fruits yeah, of like your labor, you like worked something and that you created a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's actually what we're talking about. Well, when you do, when you say fruit of loins, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's a problem. Disgusting. Yeah. But I don't like it when guys refer to it all. 
that like uh, that they genetically had all that much to do with uh, with conception. Uh, no, just made a deposit, and hoped it worked out. Yeah, you know, like when guys would be like, "Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> look, you back when you were just uh, swimming around in my testicle." It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Did Dad just, ever say that? No, I'm talking about oh. men in general. Just yeah, you'll no, hear yeah. dudes a twinkle just, in my eye. Yeah, just hey, whatever. Hey, hey, hey. It's like you you literally had like a hundred million twinkles. In that eye, mm-hmm. and one of them got lucky, and 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 the woman provides all the genetic mass, really, or ninety nine point nine nine percent of it, yeah. with the egg. The sperm is a tiny little thing that just happens to wriggle its way in there like a weirdo. Well, and mothers are good at like you know they also have the responsibility of like not drinking alcohol, not smoking cigarettes, eating healthy, getting exercise. Anything. If a guy was pregnant, that baby would come out looking like a chicken wing. Like that's it. Would just like, <laughs> drum or flat. Oh, it's eating a lot of protein. <laughs> drum stick or flat wing? Uh, we're going flat. I remember when I w- was having my baby, um, I did catch myself saying a lot, takes a real man to make a woman. <laughs> God. <laughs> takes a... Uh. <laughs> you should just slap yourself for that one. Defense wins championships, guys. <laughs> The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Here we have Brian Moot. This better not get me in trouble with my girlfriend. And Brad Nolan. No, my my wife wants to flip the swinger switch. Just two boys without man buns. Though I would do a man bun if I could. (laughs) I don't know if you can call. I guess boys have man buns. Men don't have man buns. Men have mullets. Yeah, that's right. Ponytails. I only want to be like, I only want to be characterized as like a man. When when it's like when it's very clear that my masculinity is in question, sure. But every other time, I want zero responsibility. I want to be a boy. I, every time I hear someone say like "that's man stuff," I'm a man. It's like oh, I, I can pass on that. Then I'm good. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be. I'm not, I don't. I'm not trying to prove anything. Like for to example, you. for some reason, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, these old apartment buildings that I live in. Uh, in West Hollywood, these old ones, like these old ones built, like God knows when. But I'm on the first floor, and I. All of a sudden, my toilet like bubbled the other day, like bubbled, and like <laughs> other people's like feces probably <laughs> came into the water. Right? It's disgusting. And I tried to plunge it; it won't go down. Then I turned my sink on and started bubbling again, like like weird bubbles down in the in the toilet. You flush the toilet. You got to put on a tinfoil hat and, and go I, to the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, it's Open insane. The refrigerator. And the, the shower won't like drain, so clearly there's like a monster clog in like a sewer line somewhere. Oh. So I don't know whose that is, but I'm on the bottom floor. So if it's stacked up from up above, too, then I came out Ooh. in my bathroom this morning. Because, listen, I, I was not about to do that man stuff. I, I gave it a plunge try for like three times, and then when other people's feces was coming into the water, I was like, peace out on this. Let's get maintenance on this one. So, But the problem is this morning I came out. And clearly, last night the toilet had filled up with fecal water. Is it the and then kind? drained out because there was like oh the worst. So they so then it drained back down. So it, like the water is coming up, like it's rising and falling, but it's leaving like fecal material all over the inside of the bowl. It's How like, many times can I say like, fecal it's material? Like in this reacting, segment? it's like reacting to the gravity of the moon. You've got like fecal yeah. tide. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hundred percent low tide. My toilet recedes. When are those waves peeling, bro? Let's get out there and hit them. It's like every time oh. it's good to surf, it's bad to be in my bathroom. <laughs> is there any resolution to this, or is I, it just you living in? I, a- I mean, we had to put uh, a. a work maintenance request in and i'm assuming like our roommate goes hey, oh hey man are you gonna be around because i want to make sure this gets done i'm like no i don't want to be around when that happens Ugh. tell them to come in they have f- you have full full permission to come in here and fix this toilet because it is disgusting put on a scuba suit swim down there do whatever you oh. gotta do i don't you know they snake those things too sometimes so they'll get down in the line and like do the yeah. snake thing and all of a sudden it starts coming up yeah <laughs> it's gonna be gross I think the um, I had this happen to me. Uh, this happened like right when I got married. Uh, we were staying at my my brother Killian's house. We in San Francisco. We were driving down. My ex wife and I were driving down from Seattle to Los Angeles, and we stayed at my brother Killian's house in San Francisco. Now we had gone out drinking that night, like the night before, and you know we pizza and drink and that's just not going to be some healthy bowel movements the next day right so creamy almost it just it's thick it's yeah. gonna it's malleable it's ah, not gonna be good soft serve mm, oh it's just awful dense yeah the water, it's just not healthy up. it's just void of any sort of vitamins <laughs> it's just not a good situation so 
and this is awful. This is disgusting what happened. Um, I went to the bathroom first, okay? And it was like I flushed it, and it was like that questionable thing where you have to flush it twice, and you're like, ooh, you get like right. one glug, like glug, glug. Yeah, and it's then like, you get like, not, <laughs> yeah, that was not enough. <laughs> that was not. So then Killian goes in there, and my brother Killian is like oh, lactose intolerant, and like, yeah, it's not mm. good. And so he goes second time, and he's pretty sure, like, like he had the same situation where it was like a little touch and go on the flush. Then my ex-wife goes in there just to pee. And she flushes it, and the water starts rising, and she can't figure out what to do. So she grabs like a cup, and she's dumping water into the sink. Oh, I remember. And then this. she reaches in there and starts trying to unclog the toilet by hand with her hand. By Two hand. Right. Two wrongs don't make a right. No, it's insane. Right. <laughs> she's digging around in the toilet, like touching whatever's in that in the bottom of the toilet. Uh. Try, and then she finally is like. Babe, I need help in here. And I'm like, what are you doing? Get she's your like, hand out of the toilet. She's like, the toilet's clogged. I had my hand. I'm like, what are you doing? You're never touching me with that oh. hand again. You're getting a hook. That's hey, less creepy so, now. And soon we're getting a divorce. Is that why English people have bad teeth? Because they're always jamming their hands in toilets. I don't <laughs> so I, There's a level of sh- lack of sanitariness there that I. Sh- sure, Pat. It has to have whatever. something to do with the teeth. Sure, that makes sense. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> And I showed her how to use a plunger, and it was a game changer for her. She didn't even, she'd never in her entire life wow. known what a plunger was for because she was a five foot four woman who's never clogged a toilet in her life. So she had no idea that a plunger, that's what that was for. She was like, that's what that's for? And I was like, yeah. She's like, wow. I've always seen those in bathrooms. I've never seen them how they work. I thought it was like a cereal bowl with a stick on the end of it. (laughs) Yum, yum, yum. (laughs) Been eating out of it for years. Jesus, that's disgusting. (laughs) So gross. Let's be clear. You you divorced that lady, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ex-wife for a reason, because she keeps sticking her hands in toilets. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting. Just And the worst part is that it was it, we don't know if it was mine or Killian's. <laughs> the Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Slow Wednesday playoffs. Hold on. Oh, this, this train keeps moving. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. My name is Brad Nolan. You can find me on Twitter at Brad Nolan. Brian Moot is here. It's his show. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Contractually obligated, I am to say. It's his show. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate that. (laughs) I appreciate you following the letter of the law with contracts. That we wrote on a napkin two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, And also in the studio is his middle brother, Patrick Moot. Middle. Yeah, that's right. I didn't want to say little. Little. I'm he littler. also is the littlest. I'm the littlest. He's the small guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. even the even. I'm tiny, bigger than you. Tiny little man. Bigger than you. Actually, we, this came up today. Um, we were we were talking about all, everyone's doing these 23andMe uh, ancestry.com things, right? And what's happening is so many people are doing them that you can uh, like find family members. And a lot of people are like finding family members they didn't know about because their DNA profiles are 100% match. And the and 23 Me will say like, hey, check this out. This guy's your dad. Um, oh, yeah, would, we, I we, wish I knew that. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, who your dad was? <laughs> you can find out, I, Brad. I, I don't know enough about you to laugh <laughs> well, at that, Brad. <laughs> that might be real. <laughs> it uh, is. So oh, okay. what happened, like it was a story last week that all these fertility doctors – are, people are finding out that these fertility doctors, when their moms were trying to get pregnant, were just substituting in their sperm for the other man's because, if, well, either they're freaks and creepy and crazy, or they just figured, like, I don't want people to think I'm a bad at a doctor at this, so let, let, I fixed your problem, I know, it's just you needed different guy's sperm. I it's know a, my boys can swim. It's a bold move. How are they to know that in the future, 10, 15 years, 20 years, that there will be this amazing technology that can right. figure that out? I think it was a smart move at the time. I don't, I'm not okay. judging them. But here's the thing. is If you're doing that to women and they're all coming from a certain area pool, what are the odds that your kids start hooking up one day? I mean, that, that could be pretty a, good. a rough one. They're pretty good. Yeah, These, Especially because you're a small town doctor, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one Canadian doctor right now has 11 kids they know about. <laughs> <laughs> that I was like, what is wrong? Now you're a you're a psychopath. Yeah, that's wasn't there one who did like forty or something like that. Like, well, they just keep finding out more because got... more people keep getting DNA tested, which now brings up a whole nother debate for me. Do I even want to know the truth? 
I mean, I don't. Mm. I, no we've way. talked about there's that. There's no way that mom's that that dad is my dad. We've talked about that. In the f- <laughs> there's no way, and I don't want to call mom. I mean, you know, floozy, but come on. I mean, mom. she had some tough times. Maybe I don't know. Back in '83, it was rocky. I mean, they were having <laughs> you, and then they were like, maybe this isn't working out, and. It because is. he looks nothing like my brother Killian and myself. He's got a beard. He's kind of got the middle ground going, but it's a weird, like... I look like yeah. my mom's hot trainer. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> like him. Brian Moot cares about people, sports, and family. Brad Nolan doesn't like to be bothered too much. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. I like that that implies I don't care about my own family. <laughs> right. Like that I'm the only one in the room with an actual, like I have a wife and a daughter. Yeah. I just want to say, for the record, I do care about my family. He, he cares about his own stuff. Yeah. 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 As you should. I think. I mean, if you're going to care about any family, it should be your own. Yeah. I mean, if you don't care about your own family, odds of you caring about anybody in the world are pretty low. Sure. And you realize that most people don't feel the need to point that out. I'm just going to point that out. <clears throat> Fair. Um, so we're. We, I, tell me if you think, Patrick. Because you're more of a sports fan than Brad over here. We kind of educate Brad on sports. But is this, do you think this is the, the slowest time of the year for sports right now? Or do you think, because the NBA playoffs just started, but it's early on in these series that don't mean anything because they're the first round. Hockey's in the first round of the, all their playoffs. And we already kind of know who's going to win every series. It's going to be the same old guys. We've got the NFL draft coming up where everyone just speculates on who they think everyone's going to pick, which you're all, you're all wrong. Everyone's wrong. No one's going to get that right. And baseball just started. So it's kind of like this dead zone where it feels like we have sports, but we don't have sports. I mean, I think it's worse like, it, it was worse, like, three weeks to a month ago before baseball started. See, I'm a huge baseball fan, so as soon as baseball starts, I just have sports balls but all day. How can you get ba- how can you be a baseball fan when it doesn't matter at all? I mean, there's 162 games, and what are we, like, seven or eight in right now? Yeah. It's, uh, well, no, we're, like, uh, 19, almost 20. Oh, you care so. because you're a gambling addict. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I care because I make the games matter. I'm teetering on the edge of poverty, betting my last $20 on an Angels-Red Sox game, and I'll tell you what, it is intense. That is the epitome of sad. <laughs> Thank you. Baseball? Yeah, that's right. just that. <laughs> just having to make sports interesting by betting on it, and you're betting like those weird fantasy draft bets. Fan where you, duel yeah, where you, draft you need and... some random guy who plays for the Cincinnati Reds yeah. to hit a double in, in the game to win your bet, and you're going to win like 40 bucks. Uh, last year off $3. Three dollars total. I won twelve hundred. That's Whoa, uh, one time. Yeah, that's right. Hey, that is cool. Actually, I often think because I don't know enough about sports to to like do something like that. But I th- always think like maybe I should. Like maybe some football season, I just jump on FanDuel or DraftKings or something and do it and just see if I can clean house by just guessing completely and totally guessing. Because I'm mean, sure that happens. Like to, people who have zero oh knowledge. My God, yeah, if you want to do that, I'll go heads up with you on that. <laughs> I that don't sounds know like what, a wonderful. Game. I just don't know what heads up means. I also <laughs> don't know why anyone would watch baseball on television. Oh my God, it's so it's, great. It just, I mean, Pat bets on it, and he's a he's kind of a sports I mean, junkie. So, this time but, but you though. use fantasy. Fantasy sports keep people engaged yes. in that whole situation. Well, I don't think Brad. I think you would actually do pretty well in fantasy sports because at a certain point in time, once you figure out the positions and the players, it becomes a numbers and an odds thing and since you don't have any commitment to any player or team right you would be just going based solely on odds and you'd probably clean up because you got people like my brother who also is in love with the Seattle Seahawks and then he's going to put in like random Seattle receivers just because he wants to cheer for him when he should have done the mathematically smart move and played the better receiver can you play is there fantasy golf because yes, that's even, that's more interesting than baseball there is though. there's fantasy golf I would rather watch two hours of golf on television <laughs> than baseball Baseball. You can do fantasy celebrity. So, like, you basically choose your celebrities at the beginning of the year, and then you watch their careers, and you get different points for, like, how many movies they had come wow. out, their box office, if they win awards. Like if, they're, like if they win, like, a Razzie for having the worst yeah. movies or something. Do you get points for that, or do you lose points? Is there the any new, like, maybe Me Too movement-style fantasy sports where it's oh like, who's God, getting who's called next? out next? There you take is. the Me Too pool? <laughs> like, oh, damn, dude, I won for that one. Dude, I, took, <laughs> I took Franco in the last round, and I crushed this year. I took Franco early on. I did. I took him with my first overall. I would be like, long shot. I would take Britney Spears for always keeping her mouth shut. We all know something went down there. 
But she hasn't oh, yeah. opened her mouth once. So she's she, got she's carrying some skeletons. Yeah, but you I wonder see. if there's, those skeletons are still hanging out in her camp, like still making her successful. So she's just like, never mind. I mean, I think at some point in time, they, those skeletons were running her her trust funds and things like that. Yeah, like just they had control over everything. I think the most compelling sport right now, hands down, after this past weekend, uh, amateur boxing. Uh, by Barstool Sports. Oh, yeah. You keep talking about this. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, my Rough, God. Rough and Rowdy 3. Um, now, the only thing that was a bummer about it is they finally had to start making the guys wear headgear because in Rough and Rowdy 1 and 2, these amateur fights, they weren't wearing headgear and people were just getting knocked unconscious oh, way too often. I think crumpling. Yeah, they finally got a little bit of a soul about it. But here's why it's fun. Professional boxing sucks because both people are professionals. They both trained for this. Yeah. They're in great shape. They know how to box. Amateur boxing, there's 40 fights. They're three one-minute round. You do three uh, one-minute rounds, right? Absurd. And the, you have no idea. These people have never fought in a ring with gloves on. You don't know who's been taking training serious. So we, you can blind bet red or blue, and then you got a guy come out and like, oh, no, this big dude. There, He's there's no a way. black guy. Dang <laughs> it. I got the white guy. I would say that. Uh, black fighters were, I mean, though when when a black dude came out, it was kind of lights out for whoever was fighting him. <laughs> just, you know, it's just funny. all the better guilt shape. and the internal fear, yeah, the rage uh, adding into their whole lifetime of fitness. I don't think I'm afraid of tattoos anymore because all those guys just got worked. Just oh no, tattoos overcompensating. That doesn't mean anything. Dude, there was one guy who just tripped and fell down in the second <laughs> round and decided he was done. <laughs> was too tired to get up. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Here it comes again, lunch. Will it be the same old, same old? Or are you ready to take a vacation from the ordinary with the new Jamaican Jerk Turkey Sub at Firehouse Subs? Freshly sliced smoked turkey breast, craveably sweet mustard sauce, and a hint of Caribbean seasoning. Just $5.55 for a medium. Save time. Order the new Jamaican Jerk Turkey Sub on the Firehouse Subs app. Firehouse subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Participating locations. Limited time only plus tax. Prices may vary for delivery.